I was told, well, so you add it up, and it just cannot be done. You're a girl, you're black, you're poor, and it just can't be done. I didn't pay any attention to that. I just kept right on dreaming my dreams. I was going to be a doctor. I was going to have on a white gown and a white hat, I said, and a white something on my face, and I was going to be a cutting doctor. When I was 13, my biological mother came and uh, took me out of the orphanage. She told me that you have enough education now. You have to do like the other colored girls do in Troy. And I went into domestic work. But after work, Dorothy kept at her dream studying in secret in a closet by the light of a 60-watt bulb. Abandoned by her mother again, she was taken in by an elderly couple, the Redmonds. I was 16 years old when that family accepted me. And they were poor people. And they both told me that uh, they loved me. And they said, the only thing we want you to do is stay in school and behave yourself. That wasn't hard. And I lived with them, and they were the only real parents that I ever knew. In 1959, Dorothy accepted the position of Chief of Surgery at Riverdale Hospital in Nashville. She was the first African-American woman to serve in Tennessee's General Assembly. Dorothy still makes house calls and continues her association with the orphanage that raised her. I went back to the orphanage where I had been as a child. And I talked to the children and I told them uh, that you never feel sorry for yourself because you had to be placed in an orphanage that uh, you were just as good as anybody else, and you could be just as big and just as famous, but you had to have a dream, and then you had to stick with that dream and really make it come true. I understand that I've been traveling on God's highway. Because <laughs> for no other reason did things mesh like they mesh for me. Mm -hmm.